there any detailed source or discussion of similar depth as your Gnosticism series that you could point me to in reference to Kabbalah, whether the Jewish version or the Western Hermetic version? Mm-hmm. Could you make some comments and observations about Kabbalah? Does it study or practice have any place in the life of a Christian? I have in mind your comments on the burning of the books of magic and acts and the idea that such things have no place in the life of a follower of the way. And so he just wants to know if you can comment on Kabbalah mm-hmm. and direct him towards any material like your yeah, Gnosticism. Like, like the Gnosticism yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I have not created anything on, on Kabbalah. Uh, I have a friend, uh, Fred Klett, K-L-E-T-T, and this is not the comedian, by the way, um, who is a he has a ministry, he's had the ministry probably 20, 25 years, specifically to Jews in Philadelphia. Sort of a, it's not a messianic church. He has sort of an evangelistic, you know, ministry to, to Jewish people uh, in Philadelphia. He actually spends a good deal of time on uh, Kabbalah. So you could you could Google Fred, K-L-E-T-T and Kabbalah, and you'd find, you know, some lectures that he's given online. So, you know, Fred is sort of a resource for that. I have a number of, of my own resources, like introductions to Western esoteric thought that will naturally discuss Kabbalah. But I, it's not something I've really jumped into myself as, a, as an area of interest. Getting back to sort of the overall flavor of the question, I don't see any endorsement of seeking mystical knowledge uh, in the Bible. I don't see any biblical endorsement of that. If one means by that self-initiation or self-solicitation of non-human intelligences. Okay, I don't, I don't see that at all. I see the contrary to that. Uh, you know, a couple places in Job, where even God doesn't trust his holy ones. Galatians 1 says, hey, even if an angel from heaven shows up and gives you another gospel, don't believe it. Again, I, I see the, the, the opposite thing going on in Scripture. And I think the rationale for it is because not only are the holy ones, you know, potentially, uh, they, they could mislead you, but Again, this isn't your turf. How are you going to know? How are you going to be able to parse, you know, this sort of thing? And so this is why Scripture gives these parameters, because God says, I am trustworthy. I do have your best interest in mind. You know, I love you. I'm in covenant relationship with you, all these things. And if you want to know what I'm thinking or how to contact me, here, here's, here's, here you go. You know, uh, these, these, are the, these are the hoops to jump through, jump through them, you know, that, that kind of thing. Because it's, it's about your protection and it's about you getting information from a a divine source that has your best interest in mind. If you go out on your own, you know, how are you going to judge that? So, but that that's different than, I would call that a practitioner, you know, someone who wants to have mystical experiences and then they try different things. So there's a difference between seeking to be a practitioner of mysticism versus seeking to understand the outlook, the system, all that stuff, to understand what, what mysticism teaches and what it, what it is and what people do and that sort of thing. So a practitioner is trying to seek contact for enlightenment, which is a pursuit historically, and I would say inevitably, linked to either imposing the terms for divine knowledge, inserting your own terms for divine knowledge, uh, for gnosis, you know, to become enlightened, or meriting your own status in the divine presence, in the divine family. And, and again, that's very contrary to the gospel. So, and, and what I mean by that, in, in other words, say it another way, you wouldn't, you wouldn't desire to be a practitioner if you were content to have God give you the information on his terms exclusively, or you wouldn't be a practitioner if you didn't think you were going to get some reward out of it. Again, but but that's all different than just sort of an academic inquiry about Western esoteric systems, Western esotericism or mysticism or all that sort of thing. I mean, I read a lot of that stuff, so, uh, but I'm not a practitioner. I'm not, again, seeking, you know, these encounters or anything like that. So that's the way I would, you know, I, I would approach it. Kabbalah is just a it's just Jewish. It's a it's a form of Jewish mysticism. Again, it's not it's not necessarily to people who who are practitioners. Not necessarily something overtly you know sinister or overtly occult. But again, what why do people do it? Because they want to be in control of the terms of their own divine encounter, their own encounter with the numinous, okay, with the divine presence, and they expect to get something out of it. So I, I don't uh, I don't see how the, how that's consistent with the patterning that we get in Scripture about this sort of thing.